Hello, beautiful people. I am jumping on live to share with you something that I have been avoiding <laughs> and justifying with my behavior and my current life experience. And I feel this is something that is very important to share because we all do it as human beings. Um, and that is going to distraction and avoidance of what's actually going on in our internal world. And what happens when we go into some level of distraction and avoidance of our internal world is we create a shit show in our external world. <laughs> if we refuse to look at what's going on inside, then the universe will give us something in our outside to force us to look at it. And that's usually through pain, suffering, trauma and drama. And I've done so much of that. And this was why I was avoiding this video. <laughs> I've done so much of that in my life. And I got to a point where I said I wouldn't do it anymore. I said that no matter how hard it is to look at something and no matter how challenging, uh -uh, the inner, no matter the time is the inappropriate time or whether the, you know, no matter what's going on in my world, I was going to make the time to lean into those things and deal with them. Because I know that if we don't deal with situations and we don't work on the internal world, and that the universe will give you a nice big slap. Um, I avoid the slaps. I avoid the traps. I prefer, I prefer a feather across the face now. Something that I have learned to lean in and do the vulnerability, do the intimacy, do the uncomfortable. Because I know when I do choose to look at it, that it opens a space for peace and healing. Now, um, last week I had been doing some really intense um, healing on my sexual trauma, on my yoni, on my groin, and on the physical part of my body. I've worked a lot in the mind space, but I haven't physically done a lot of physical healing. Um, I had a beautiful friend facilitator healing with me where we pulled out a lot of grief, pain, loss of my innocence and things from my root chakra that were blocked up and I went into a place of surrendering into safety and feeling protected and secure and that was a beautiful gift and to feel that with him and to be able to feel that level of he's got my back and I'm safe and I can open up to not having to be in a protective mode. After that amazing beautiful healing the next day was when um, a situation occurred with one of my clients. My client overstepped my boundaries and um, I guess sexually assaulted me or did sexually assault me. And I was in control and I could protect myself and I could speak up and I didn't do, I guess, I did revert into the way that I used to in, in previous. I, I, I reverted into a childhood response. The childhood response for me in those situations where I haven't felt safe has been to shut down and close off. So there's been a freeze. Um, although I was in a freeze state, I was still able to verbally um, express um, no and stop. <laughs> but the body reaction had already taken place. So basically, I had... Um, I had already all of the the stagnated energy that I'd just released and felt this openness and this surrender and this feminine flow of like safety and protection. It was like everything in my subconscious mind at that point in time was like, see, it's not safe. It's not safe to let go. It's not safe to, to believe you're protected. Um, and, and it just confirmed this story. So... For me, 
um, I actually ended up in a very disassociated state. I went into a shock um, response because um, uh, I guess this is linked to where um, you have PTSD symptoms that when something um, triggers you into a <clears throat> A lifetime of trauma you it's not just the situation that comes up so when you're dealing with severe trauma um, and people that have When you're dealing with severe trauma and abuse survivors, what you don't under what what's really important to understand, and this is people that have been in the military as well, is that when you ha are triggered into a PTSD response, you're going into the mind's um, memory of every time before that. So it's not that situation specifically that is. <clears throat> It's not that, um, hang on, give me a second. It's not that situation specifically that has caused the response. It's the fact that that's triggered you into um, a lifetime of, I guess, maybe unhealed wounding. And even when you have worked a lot on the healing and forgiveness, there's, it, it only takes um, sometimes the mildest thing to put you into a space of being in a child um, or a, a fight, flight, freeze response. And for me, I haven't been in a fight, flight, freeze response like that for a really long time. Um, and I haven't disassociated from myself for a really long time. And I, um, the, the point of this video is that it, um, it's really easy for us to go into a level of distraction and a level of um, avoidance so that you don't have to feel the feels. You don't have to process it and you don't have to actually um, move through the mind, the lesson and the emotion. And for me, the the thing that I t have, have avoided the most, I'm great with the mind and looking at the beliefs and the lessons, but the, the, the feeling side sometimes is one that um, is usually the last space that I want to feel into, um, especially when you have life, you know, I've got little children around me, I'm moving house, I'm trying to pack, I'm trying to also build my business in a new um, town, as well as I've got um, the pressure and the expectations of um, creating income to survive and this reality, right? When, when you've got this reality, <laughs> avoiding things that are going to disrupt that, like taking a few hours to express the pain and grief and hurt and the, <clears throat> the emotion is something that you can easily go into distraction of. You can easily do that because you can justify it with I don't have time <laughs> I don't or I'm not ready or I don't want to <laughs> um, and for me I'm very aware that I didn't want to I didn't want to I've just done all this beautiful healing I didn't want to go back into that I don't want to feel that <laughs> I'm trying to work at getting rid of that not and, and I mean you have have to go through it to release it so it, it's perfect right it's absolutely perfect but what happens is something will trigger you into an old response for me this is an old response I haven't been I haven't behaved the way I have um, the last week for a really long time I've gone into my masculine energy of do 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 go 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 um, where I am completely busied myself 
Um, I have been overeating so that I can numb out my body and my emotions so I don't have to feel. Um, and I've had a really unhealthy relationship with food in the past and I had actually healed that pattern. Um, it was an old program that I haven't used for the last three years. So for me to go back into a place where I'm using emotion, uh, using food as an emotional coping mechanism shows me that there's some serious internal stuff going on that I am avoiding. And even this video, I had planned to share how we can get triggered and go into a distraction because we don't want to actually lean into the emotion. Um, I'd planned to do this um, <laughs> like four days ago and I knew, I actually decided, you know, I unconsciously or subconsciously was in a place, no, unconsciously in a place of avoidance because I knew that if I spoke it and I spoke it outside of my head, it's different knowing it here. It's different, sorry, not here. It's different knowing it up here. You know, you can be aware of what you're doing and you can know all your stuff and all your things and you can go to a psychologist or a counselor or a healer and you can say, I do this because of this and this, this, this and this and I'm, you know, I'm broken or fucked up or whatever you want to call yourself, but you're none of those, by the way. Um, because, you know, I was sexually abused when I was three and then I was abused again when I was eight and my dad left and, and I've looked for love with men for my entire life and da 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 and I've used sex as a tool to get love and whatever it is that your story is, you can say that and say that it's shown up in this behavior and this behavior and you can know it from a mental aware standpoint and a psychological standpoint and you can change your mindset, but if you don't deal with the inner feelings and the energetic vibration and the energy that's been attached to those stories, you're just gonna keep repeating it because they're linked. You have to do both together. And if you're not willing to lean into it, it will keep showing up in other ways. It will always show up. It will always show up because your your mind is so desperately wanting to be healed your mind will cr keep creating situations that are going to force you to feel pain and suffering until you actually feel the pain and suffering and change the sort so you can't avoid it you actually can't avoid it you can't you can only do distractor for so long before the pain becomes too intense that you have to look at it and you have to feel it and you have to move through the shadows. And I'm grateful, I'm so grateful that I have beautiful people in my life that can see these things about me and can see that I'm not being myself and can feel my energy is depleted and can feel I'm disconnected and will speak to that. You know, they'll speak to that because, you know, I'm aware of it. But when you have an outside confirmation, you've got a choice to go, oh, well, I can look at this or I can keep, keep distracting and wait for the universe to, to give me that slap. I can. I can do it that way. What way would I rather do it? Would I rather look at it? Would I rather feel it? Would I rather choose to consciously process it? Or am I going to allow it to, I guess, be out of my hands? Um and cause a way that I have no other choice but to feel it. Um, and that's not worth it in my opinion. I won't choose that anymore. Um, so I'm super grateful for my friend that reached out this morning and said that my post sounded like I was projecting because I was. And I was aware of it, but now I'm speaking it. And if I speak it out, then I have to look at it. That's how I process things. I can hear it all in my head and I can mentally understand it, but until I speak to it and verbally express where it's coming from, that's when um, you can choose to really look at it and heal it. So I hope that this video has given you a perspective and understanding on why leaning into the discomfort is so important because it's only by leaning into the discomfort that you can really heal. I love you.